he doesn't quench of smoking flax. My God is has a grace and a loving kindness, a loveliness in total, that is greater than his law. His law is a blessing, it's a great guidance, a great teacher. But his grace and forgiveness, his loving kindness, his compassion, is everything to me. His tolerance, you see. Religious people can sometimes be so legalistically intolerant. They've elevated the law to being the Godhead in the sense that it's absolute, it's perfect, it's always to be. Um, for instance, they faced a situation where um, we had the church have uh, some couples who are not married. We don't have membership of the church, so we don't have to worry whether they're members or not. But the chap in charge is concerned not to give such people office because, well, they're a bad example in some sense that um, they're in breach of um, uh, the teaching that, uh, you know, you should be committed for life and formally so, if you like, uh, married in the eyes of the church and God uh, and and that this is the safe way to go. And it, well, yes, fine. But they're not all following that. Does that mean I don't have them in the church? Oh no, he doesn't follow that. He has them in the church, of course. Because, you know, um, they're always potentially going to be able to put things right. <laughs> and more likely to put it right if they're in the church than if they're kept outside. My goodness, that wouldn't be very good, would it? But at the same time, um, he's cautious of giving them office of any sort, even relatively trivial office, you know. They can be sort of helpers, but mm, there's some question of degree that starts to it be a concern. But our God, my God, is not quite like that. Um, Not remotely like that. <laughs> he is full of kindness, full of love, incredibly tolerant, very forbearing. His grace goes on and on, actually. I don't think there's any end to it. I know there's threats of hell and judgment and uh, revelation type uh, thesis, but what I have valued is his incredible kindness to me when I'm so far astray and he doesn't limit his kindness or insist on me learning he waits for me to need to learn and want to learn so that I can hear it or if I can't hear it perhaps see it or perhaps in a small way experience the consequences of something that's adrift and uh, realise oh my goodness I need to tighten this up you see, his grace is astonishingly lovely, astonishingly kind, quite simply astonishingly lo loving. Hmm. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Dad. You see, God is not facing any external constraint, as far as I understand it anyway. Whereas an earthly dad is, he's trying to cope with being imperfect himself, being in a constrained world external to the family and doing the best he can for the family within that car. setting. And therefore he can be quite uh, intolerant at times. There's some things that you just have to do, son. Um, I can't have you doing that. It, you know, it, it's heavy, it's legalistic, it's... Um, it's because of his situation vis-a-vis -vis the world that he has to cope with and a certain incapacity to release himself from that constraint. So he thinks to himself, well, if I don't do so and so, then we're going to be in trouble. I'm going to have to impose this on the kids. I uh, don't want to and so forth. But, you know. Well, of course, I hope that God is not 
inadequate in that way, nor under such constraint, therefore. Um, I trust that he has a sovereignty and a freedom. Unlimited time. I can appreciate that the threat of him being limited in some way, if you like, having to have a final judgment at some point, might in itself be a blessing in that it um, is sufficient to, shall I say, encourage the uh, more wayward among us to uh, come in line. But it's not, in the meantime at least, what I seem to see of God, namely this incredible patience and forbearance and non-intrusiveness. In the exercise of the sovereignty that we seem to have in hand and be doing, carrying out, he allows us to go very wrong in the transitory, in this universe of the transitory, and doesn't charge in before us and declare in awesome power such that we turn instantly from our wickedness, if you like. And I think this experience is instructive of just how gracious he is. In other words, I don't experience an horizon, a limitation to that grace. Although I do agree I hear threats of it in Scripture, no question. And that in itself may be helpful, in a way, a sort of uh, a concern that from our fallen point of view at least, his unlimited grace potential is hard to conceive. Nonetheless, if I go by the evidence that I'm experiencing, well, there's an unbelievable amount of grace around, a tolerance of evil in this world that you would have thought appalls the host of heaven. Well, unless they have the same understanding as he has, of course, which I suppose Well, I suppose they do have. Why is my view? And I suppose I can't see how your view can really be otherwise. Well, but perhaps it is. <laughs> But I do so hope that such difference in view, if it does continue to exist, I do so hope that it not be, in some sense, divisive, but that we can, in some sense, reach out in trust and faith in our God, or just in Him. I suspect that our unity, I suspect is not a good word, it's got a negative connotation, isn't it? I hope, I trust, that our unity in this regard 
is something that's of value to you too, such hope. And is acceptable to our lovely God. Bless you.